We're slim and so. Is it working? Two uni students that have chosen to live life on the water. For the past six months, we've been bunkered down for the cyclone season, repairing and making upgrades to our tiny home. Didn't even take that much swearing. In preparation to round the top of Australia. We're finalising the last of our jobs, but boats being boats, when you think everything is going according to plan, well, you've just jinxed it. Things were looking up after fixing the water sloshing under our feet, but upon looking up, We've found our next challenge. We've got some bad news. While I was up the masters, we've morning, got the fellas here from Quadrant Marine who know a lot more about everything rigging than us. I think the technical term for it was buggered. The following episodes will be presented as the events occurred in real life. It may seem confusing at times, and believe me, it was. This is part two of Where the f Did We Go? It was all going well, and I was feeling pretty swell. Being anchor guy, it's an annual tradition for me to pull out the anchor chain, giving it a bit of fresh paint and colour ahead of the cruising season, which is now just on our doorstep. This makes my life a little easier when informing Skip of precisely how much chain we have out that's less of a boat job per se, but a worthy beer cracking distraction after a long day of exam prep. Painting the anchor chain works really well for the first couple months. What we found to be a more lasting solution is coloured zip ties every 10 metres. Not only do the zip ties last the whole season, but the colour coding's pretty handy when you lose count. As we're about to head into some pretty extreme tides, while the anchor chain is out, we want to add a little bit more length to it. Luckily, we have young Nicholas as a friend and splicing expert. What are you here for today, Nick? What are you helping us with? What's today's Nick episode? Do some splicing. He did a try to attempt to teach us, but that was kind of a long time ago that now, was, and we haven't spliced since. Splice. And this is an important splice. We're going to splice this rope, exactly this rope, onto the end of our anchor chain to give us a bit more length. So it's an important splice. That's why we've got Nick here to help us with that. Because if we did it without Nick being here, we'd never sleep on anchor again <laughs> using it. Because this way we can blame Nick yeah. if anything goes wrong. Okay, okay. If yeah, okay. if we float away in the middle of the night, leaving our anchor behind, there's only one man to blame, and it's not me, and it's not Chili, and it's not me. Wait, it's not. <laughs> and it's not me. <laughs> Adding an extra 20 metres of road onto our 60 metres of chain, we are hoping will open some opportunities to check out some deeper anchorages. And now we have to uh, slip something on to <laughs> Jobs got put on hold, as we were forced inside by wind and rain. And after one very windy night, we were awoken by a loud bang on the rigging. That's our sulfide go antenna. No, it's not meant to be like that. However, with wind howling and rain pouring, the sulfide go antenna was left to clang and bang until a weather window presented itself. The sun's out and the wind has stopped blowing for the first time in like a week. We've got our sulfide antenna hanging by a thread and banging on our rigging and we're going to take this opportunity to go straight up the mast and sort that out. Miles is going to be on the safety rope. Up. Why aren't you going up the mast? Petrified, absolutely petrified of heights. <laughs> so I was gonna climb up this mast. I was even going harder, so I thought he was gonna go bare knuckle. Yeah. <laughs> Little did we know at this point 
This was the beginning of another hurdle we would have to tackle if we ever wanted to get sailing this season. I'm on the second spreader. Although you're like, I'm not scared of heights. Your heart rate definitely gets up a little bit. <laughs> The thread is stuck inside the antenna and it snapped off the base. So we probably have to disconnect the antenna and send it down. So with the base broken, it wasn't going to be an instant fix. So while the boys have scrounged up some tools for me to get the broken base off, I had a moment to look around and I found something that doesn't seem quite ideal. All right, we've got some bad news. While I was up the mast this morning, I noticed something a little bit weird with the forestay. This right here, it appears like it's sort of unraveled in a way, um, untwisted itself. <laughs> Massive bummer. This is like not really seeming like a small job. Um, uh, I don't even know what to say right now. We need a rigger. Hello, we need a rigger now. <laughs> the rigging gods heard our calls. Walking by just so happened to be a rigger, who just so happened to work for a guy that just so happened to be a fan of the show. So after our little rigging discovery the other day, we've got the fellas here from Quadrant Marine who know a lot more about everything rigging than us and are gonna go up the mast and have a little inspection for us and sort of let us know what it is that we're looking at up there. So we've been informed that it's actually re-inspection happy hour this morning, which is um, putting smiles on all our faces. <laughs> They also informed us that while it may be happy hour, our force day is, um, I think the technical term for it was buggered, which is, you know, they're not so great news. The guys called the damage bird caging. However, at this stage, we're not too sure how this happened or how long we've been sailing around with our force day like this. But the good news is they are keen to do us a solid and squeeze us in to replace the force day as soon as possible. While they had other jobs on today, they've taken some measurements and we will hear from them shortly. In the meantime, Slim has gotten a new, slightly more compact Selfie Go antenna, and once again, I was thrown up the mast by the boys. Um, oh, yeah, you guys scissors? Miles is back to help us. Thanks, Miles. You're welcome. So I've sliding up. Get my tools ready, babe. Stock in the bases. Say something funny with the new ones. Ah, the joys. It's even better when you don't have a voice. It makes it really hard to yell down the mast. Alright, so I should start with the stuff on the base. Now do the base first and then get the base on and then when before you screw in the, the antenna then do the thread. I think. Don't listen to me though. <laughs> nah, you're a professional now dude. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I had a professional nap today. <laughs> Afternoon one. Aerial in a bag. Aerial in a bag and a professional. And a professional. <laughs> People are going to think that you do all the work around here just because someone's going to hold the camera. Yeah. <laughs> nah, someone's going to look good on camera too. Well, that's it. Someone's going to be looking good. <laughs> About 15 knots. Suddenly. Thanks, babe. Nothing like an afternoon boat job, eh, Ben? Huh? Nothing like an afternoon boat job. Nothing like an afternoon boat job with a view. <laughs> Antenna successfully installed. Trady Soap at it again. Yeah! It's really hard to get a shot. I don't know what I'm filming. Right. 
Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Another great successful mission. Another well successful great. Well done. mission. Well done. Um. Slim would have been shitting himself up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get us some beers. Now, back to that rigging. The boys have given us a call and said they can slot us in. However, we've got a pre-existing date with the hard stand, so the fourth day will have to wait. You skip? Which leads us back to here. G'day guys and welcome back. Thanks so much for your patience. Boy, do we have a lot to catch you up on. See, we thought we'd try to trick you last week into thinking we'll finally leave in Early Beach. However, we are not going yet. Did we fool you? We are going into the slip today and onto the hard to anti-foul and do other little bits and pieces here or there to get us going again. So we're not going just yet. We're going into the hard. But then, well, we've come to a screeching halt. We're now on the public wharf. This actually happened to us last time. We're meant to come out, out at 8.30 this morning and we saw that a boat was on the slip and we're like, oh, we'll just pull into the public wharf and while we're waiting, and we just gave them a call and they're like, nah, you're meant to be lifted at 2.30. This is exactly the same thing that happened last time. We were meant to come out early in the morning and then they're, on that day they were like, oh, no, nah, like one o'clock. And we're like, what is with slips? <laughs> Yeah. So we weren't aware of the two o'clock thing, so I asked them if they could do a bit of wiggling for us because we've only got four days on the hard, so we can't afford to lose the first full day. Plus, it's meant to be raining tomorrow, so today's a big day for us. And they have agreed to squish us in as the next boat. So we're coming out in about half an hour, which is good, which is amazing. Not good, it's amazing. Because, yeah, if it was raining tomorrow and we lost today, yeah. we would have been in strife to try and get everything we need done done. So I'm happy. Have a look at all those barnacles. It's a miracle she moved. <laughs> the calm at the floating aquarium. And then we're off again. To the slip we go. We're on the move again. The travel lift looks like it's getting itself into position, so we're gonna do the same. Action stations, folks, Action let's go. Action stations! <laughs> After quite literally signing our lives away, we began mentally preparing for the physically demanding days ahead of us. that moment where you're like oh look at all the growth and stuff but you also like show me that anode I want to see some anode left. As Nakama, our home and all of our worldly possessions emerges from the water there's a growing sense of anticipation to check out how she's been holding up below the waterline. We can see the keel, the rudder and the prop are still attached so we're off to a pretty good start. But it won't be until the barnacle's clear that we can get up close and personal and have a thorough inspection to get a true idea of how she's been holding up and how busy we're going to be in the coming week. After 19 months since our last antifowl, Nakama was starting to look like a sushi shop. Can chili to Miles' boat. Lil Chill's going on a play date with Miles today. Uncle Miles! Come on! While we're getting lifted, we're gonna pick her up this afternoon. Hello, Chili. Hello. Oh my god, she's like, ah. Hello, Mrs. Petulia. Ah, oh, that one's just completely free. Is that that's Chili's bedroom? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Chill, have fun. I'm really glad we made that decision because she would have absolutely been traumatized by this experience. Are you ready for the next few days? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. She needs to go out for oysters. Yeah, bring an oyster plate, eh? That's, that's with a karma, always classy. Yeah. Doesn't just get barnacles, she brought bloody oysters to the show. <laughs> Everyone bring their lemons, salt, Tabasco, whatever you fancy on your oysters, because we've got them. 
free of charge. We won't charge you for our oysters. Maybe 50 bucks. This is going to cost us quite a bit. So. Yeah. The anode looks absolutely in great condition. That was one thing I was really, really nervous about because if the anode goes, then our sail drive is going to start getting eaten. But the anode is literally 99.9% .9 all there. It's so surprising because the last time we got lifted was about like over 18 months ago. Is it over 18 months ago? Yeah. Crazy. Well, I guess you know what next week's episode's going to be all about. I'm already down $200 for today. What? 200 bucks. So we'll see you there for the third installment of the mini series, Where the f Did We Go? It's now Slim and Soap, all up to us. It's now all up to Slim and Soap to make shit happen, to make dreams work. Let's get into it. Let's go.